years as we're loving local and when we tell you this next statistic you're gonna probably go it's been how long <laughs> Wells Fargo Arena when we're talking about the first event ever held at Wells Fargo Arena celebrates its 10th birthday today. Wow, that went fast. Wow. <laughs> it like a year over nine and a half. Holly Kilgard is here. You're the assistant general manager over at Wells Fargo. Good to see you. You too. And how long have you been over at Wells Fargo? Um, I was there when it was still under construction, so probably ten and a half years now. It's been a long time. Wow. It's so hard you, to believe. You saw it rise from the hole in the ground, didn't you? It I changed did. the landscape of everything when it comes to entertainment here in Central Iowa. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great ten years. It's hard to believe uh, ten years is here in the blink of an eye. It just seems like uh, a few days ago that we were uh, still cleaning up construction dust. So and now, I don't often listen to what our general manager says, but he did mention yesterday, <laughs> and he's right about this, <laughs> that uh, it used to be that we didn't get as many big shows in, in Des Moines as we do now, and, mm -hmm. and he's he's totally right. I mean, it just seems like this has become a magnet for for good entertainment in Central Iowa. Well, I'll tell you, um, oftentimes... Uh, like the first you, concert that ever happened there? Yep, mm -hmm. Tom Petty. Um, oftentimes, you know, a lot of it has to do with the ease of shows getting in and out of the facility. So new technologies, new, you know, lots of loading docks make a big difference for the shows. But also, um, let's be honest, uh, ticket sales dictate a lot. When shows here that, you know, they can sell out arenas in Des Moines, Iowa, or do very well, it um, leaps into other events or shows that maybe didn't think they would play Des Moines, it catches their eyes. So. I was here, because and, and, I haven't been here that long, that there were some incredible people that came to Vets Auditorium. What did Wells Fargo do to our area? Well, I think it uh, revived a lot of, uh, I think the Back in the day, Vets was the heyday and had all the big acts, but then I think as it aged and other arenas came up around the country, it, it uh, wasn't um, a must-play venue anymore. And I think, you know, everyone wants to play in the new shiny arena, but you also have to uh, um, prove that you're worth it, too. So I think, you know, a lot of manpower and a lot of, uh, you know, whether it's ticket sales or whether it's the marketing or whether it's the um, production at our building, it all, um, it all plays part in this big puzzle to get big shows. Yeah, it's not just the building itself, but it's the people in it. It is. We have an amazing crew, and we work some crazy long hours. And uh, you know, a lot of the people we work with, uh, we spend more time with than we do our own families. So um, I'm glad we have the crew we do. It's some of the best in the country, and we've been told that time and time again from shows. Great. Because you, you folks live Wells Fargo Arena. We do. You know, it's. Uh, I tell this to people a lot because of the hours we put in. It's a. It's a lifestyle. It's not a career. Mm -hmm. We live and breathe it every day, and even even when we're on vacation. You know, we're taking calls or or text messages, you know, so it's it's 24-7. Now, you were here before the building was even done, and let's go to the Wayback Machine now. We're going to dial it back 10 years today, the first event that was there. Tony Hawk Boom Boom Huck Jam. And at first, people went, what in the world is that? Right. And how was the attendance for the first event for the arena? It was good. Um, Tony Hawk's event was a um, skateboarding extreme, um, kind of like X Games type event, and mm. uh, it was well received. Um, it was a different kind of event, but you know that's part of what we do in our world is we can't have all concerts and we can't have all basketball games. We have to have a variety. So it was a it was a great way to start out. Now consistently, a show that comes back every year. What's the most? What's the the best show that comes back when it comes to attendance wise? Oh boy, um, you know the state tournaments are pretty hard to beat in mm -hmm. Iowa. They're, uh, they're a staple here and uh, I think they always will be. So Now speaking of tournaments, you have one coming up here in a little bit, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we got a little one this year. A little one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in March uh, we're hosting the NCAA men's basketball for the first time. So we're really looking forward to it. Um, we had a good uh, good run with NCAA um, wrestling um, last year. So it was our uh, warm up to uh, men's basketball. Now, what kind of attendance do you think? Would we just sell out for that? Is it sold out already? Yep, it is. It is already. It wow, is. that's and amazing. Yeah, You've that's got a incredible. couple people coming up I've not heard of. You have a Shana Twain. Shania Twain. Oh, Shania Twain. Twain. I think yes. I heard of her. Floor Swift. Ta 
Taylor Swift is coming up. <laughs> Shania is on the 6th and uh, October 8th is Taylor Swift. Yep, um, I'll tell you what, that Miss Taylor, she, she's a popular young lady and I don't <laughs> see her slowing down anytime soon. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, that's kind of true of Wells Fargo as well. It's been 10 years, a great 10 years. Where are we looking into the future for another 10? Well, you know, um, every year I think uh, we come off, we uh, set the bar high, but we're just coming off our best year ever. So each year the bar keeps getting higher. And, you know, this this season or year for us coming into it, we have two NCAA events. We have NCAA volleyball in December and then um, basketball in March. We have some concerts that we're uh, just finishing up the details right now, but um, it's going to be a humongous year for us. And if anything, um, it's it's a good problem to have, but we lack dates. We can't fit everything in that so we are, really are you know, One wow. of the things that, that really is a task for an arena or a venue is trying to find an act and plugging it in. Are the, the acts coming to you now saying, hey, we want to play your venue? They are. It works both ways, but we do have more coming to us. And it's the way I describe it to people, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. We have our dates, and of course we have our, our three tenant teams and our you know normal family shows that are already plugged in so we have mm -hmm. to try to work there the concerts routing into our available dates and sometimes we uh, make it work and sometimes we have to pass so we simply don't have enough uh, dates in the calendar uh, if you do pass on these bigger bands we have an area right over here <laughs> <laughs> we can accommodate, we can accommodate some yeah, yeah. So, perfect you know, if they really want to be here perfect work. well it, it's been a fun ride and you've been it there has. every step of the way and it's great to see you guys uh, thank continue you. to be thank successful thank you guys all for uh, your you know we couldn't do it without the community support either we've had great support whether it be coming to our events or helping us promote it or just being excited in general when uh, people come to town so thanks everybody yeah how can you not be excited about <laughs> Wells Fargo Arena that's great things good. are happening Perfect. there all the time well Holly good to see you again yeah you Thank too you. be good Thank we'll you. be right back it is 19 minutes past nine o'clock you're watching great day live on KCWI